And still with me in the studio is a security expert, Dixon Osaji, to talk about this. Again, it's good to have you. Thank you. I'm sure you heard that explosion. You know, oh, when sure. we hear things like this, you, you get worried for so many reasons. What are the issues? Uh, what are the problems that we have? What's your reaction to that story? Well, uh, uh, human life, uh, we lost yesterday. And uh, I think that uh, incident is classified as a uh, mammoth disaster, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to uh, disaster management, we have three forms of disaster. We have the natural disaster, uh, man-made disaster, and inadvertent uh, disaster. Inadvertent mm -hmm. disaster are disasters that uh, occur by mistakes. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the report from NEMA, uh, which simply implies that the incident is an inadvertent uh, mm -hmm. disaster. It's not a deliberate disaster. Right. But the report is conflicting, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I belong to a various uh, group chat, security chat groups, mm -hmm. and the report we also have in our own security uh, uh, group was that it was a vandalism mm. that resulted to that. And uh, if uh, the NEMA claims it's, a, it's an inadvertent disaster okay. and we have another claim that it's a uh, deliberate disaster, mm -hmm. then uh, I think it's called for investigation. Right. Uh, because incidents like this should not be swept under the carpet mm -hmm. because we are good in sweeping things under the carpet. And the reason why things keep happening in Nigeria is because we don't have a, a very good reward and punishment system. Mm -hmm. You know, because some people feel that they can go and carry out vandalism and go scot-free. Until we have a very strong institution, because punishment is very good, it's an essential part of life. Are you saying that because you are, is that the military part of you talking? No, 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 I'm a security management professional. Okay. I have happened to uh, be a chief security officer of a company, mm -hmm. and uh, part of my success was uh, I, I, uh, punishment, you know, uh, crime and punishment. Crime mm -hmm. Punishment is very essential. Yeah, we don't punish people. Even if we punish people, the punishments are minimal. Punishment are deterrence measures, you know, right. and it serves as a specific deterrence or a general deterrence. Specific deterrence in the sense that whoever commits that crime uh, should be dealt with mm -hmm. and uh, I think he will not come back to commit such crime again and that uh, uh, punishment awarded to that person is going to send a general deterrence to the public right. to know that hey you don't go cl close to the government pipeline in fact the government should even make it a law going close to the pipeline mm -hmm. uh, should be a punishment uh, a punishable offense but now I blame the government for everything that's happening because it's an avoidable uh, situation you see when it comes to pipeline protection our people don't understand the use of surveillance uh, cameras right. Because uh, before any incident has transpired, I think our government should have been able to be proactive enough to view or ascertain what's happening. Mm -hmm. In foreign land, if you are going to a, 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 a such, places. such place, which we classify as critical infrastructures, if you are going to any critical infrastructure, before you get there, you are already picked up. Why? Because there's a monitoring device, a monitoring system that will alert the police unit, alert the uh, security agency, mm -hmm. hey, there's an intruder trying to break through uh, to this critical infrastructure. If we, can't, if we have a very good effective uh, 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 punishment system, right. we have a very good uh, surveillance system, mm -hmm. and we also have a very good uh, uh, protection in depth. When I say protection in depth, is that you don't leave our pipelines vulnerable. Mm -hmm. You see, human beings are vulnerable. Pro critical infrastructures are also vulnerable. Right. Vulnerable to who? Criminal elements. If you want our pipelines not to be uh, vandalized, you need to carry out what we call protection in depth. Protection in depth in the sense that for the criminal to get to that uh, uh, critical infrastructure, it's going to take him some time. And mm -hmm. those time we call it delay measures. Now for him to pass through those delay measures, which simply implies that he's going to be uh, psychologically uh, demoralized mm -hmm. because it's going to take time. But yeah, our criminal carry out actions quickly and they succeed quickly. Why? Because they have the opportunity. You know, those days you always say 99 days uh, for the thief, one day for the owner. owner. But that's not true. We we'll never say that one day for the owner. <laughs> so that's not true. Mm. Because the truth is that the thief are out there monitoring you. They just need an opportunity. Are you with me? Yeah. It's just an opportunity. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very uh, 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 important that we look into protection in depth. You know, we should put in a measures in place whereby for you to get into a target, you pass through a kind of what we call concentric cycle. Concentric cycle is a protection in depth whereby if you are able to beat the first gate, mm -hmm. you, you, you beat the second gate, you are going to sixth gate before you get to the assets. Fifth, sixth, before you get to the seventh gate, you should be caught. Mm -hmm. So no criminal likes delay. Yeah. I understand? So until we walk on our delayed measures mm -hmm. in uh, batting criminal elements, things will continue to go wrong. Now, talking about delay, uh, 17 people died, I mean, according to media reports from that incident yesterday. How do you assess our level of responses in emergencies like this, you know, in our country? Yeah, our responsive uh, measures is very, very low, very, very weak, and uh, 
It's not. We're not even trying to uh, develop. Lagos State is doing so well mm -hmm. when it comes to uh, re response, uh, incident response. Mm -hmm. Now, the incident that transpired yesterday, I think uh, the fire brigade and fire service at Landy were drafted there. Then what about our area firefighting? We don't have area firefighting. Area firefighting in the sense that where uh, the vehicle cannot go, the aeroplane, the helicopter can yeah. flow around that area mm -hmm. and uh, you know uh, uh, drop uh, fire hydrants. You understand? So if we have a very good and efficient area fighting. Uh, area firefighting uh, mm -hmm. mechanism in place, uh, that incident would have uh, happened. And it took about uh, 19 lives. Some people were thinking that it was an explosion from mm -hmm. the Ojo barracks. The explosion uh, shook a lot of people. Even the barrack was well shook. A lot of places, people died. And mm -hmm. uh, I sympathize with the family of those who died mm -hmm. and uh, the people who, they, they never knew they would, have, they would mm -hmm. be gone yesterday. Mm -hmm. And that is why we need to uh, put more uh, uh, security measures in our critical infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Because first of all, the government must be able to carry out a vulnerability assessment mm. and a vulnerability analysis of all our critical infrastructure. Mm. After carrying out those vulnerability analysis, then profile solutions, mitigation uh, uh, factors that will not uh, give criminal elements opportunity mm -hmm. to uh, go and carry out vandalism. Even uh, in a session of criminal elements, you know, mitigation factors that will prevent any inadvertent or natural disaster. Mm. Thank you so very much for that contribution Thank there. You.